How do you create total and net ionic equations? The answer is, first you need a balanced chemical equation, and then you break up all of the aqueous ion, all the aqueous things into their constituent ions. Let's say we're going to mix calcium nitrate with phosphoric acid or hydrogen phosphate. We have our calcium nitrate. We have our phosphoric acid. And what we need to do, those are both aqueous by the way, is double displacement. Calcium goes with phosphate. Calcium has a charge of two plus. Phosphate has a charge of three plus. So we need a two on the phosphate and a three on the calcium. And we need H with NO3. They both have a charge of one, so it ends up being HNO3. Now first of all, HNO3 is an aqueous compound. You'll need to look up your solubility rules. All nitrates are soluble. Calcium phosphate, on the other hand, is a solid. It will precipitate in solution. You need a balanced chemical equation, so it's time to balance this bad boy. We got two of these, we got three of these, and we end up making six of these. Pretty sweet. I'm awesome at balancing. You can try it slower on your own if you didn't follow that. Uh, rewind, that's what YouTube's for. All right, but what we need is a total ionic equation. To get the total ionic equation, you break up all your AQ molecules into their constituent ions. This makes three calciums. So I have three Ca2 plus ions aqueous in my solution. I have three nitrates, but actually each molecule carries two nitrates, which means I have six NO3 minus ions also floating around in my solution. I get three H, no, oh no, three H's for each molecule and two molecules total means I have six H pluses in my solution. And I have two phosphates two PO4 three minuses. If you don't know the charges that come on each of these atoms, you're basically just gonna have to memorize them. I'm not gonna lie. So on the left hand side of our equation, I have my three calciums, six nitrates, six hydrogens, six H pluses I should say, and two phosphates, all aqueous, true story. But this is not aqueous, so we do not divide it up on the right hand side of our equation. You only divide up things that are aqueous. What we do, can do is break this one up. We still have our six H plus ions because it's aqueous. And we have our six NO3s because they're aqueous. The reason we break up the aqueous ones is because in water, aqueous compounds dissociate into their ions, whereas precipitates stay in their crystal form. Ah, this is the total ionic equation. Boom. If you want a net ionic equation, what you have to do is cross out things that appear on both sides of the equation. And by that I mean the left and the right, or because I ran out of space, the top and bottom for me. Cross out ions that appear on both sides of the equation. These are called spectator ions, and the reason for that is while the calcium and phosphates get together to make a solid, the hydrogens just sit there and the nitrates just sit there. They're not doing anything special, they're just watching the show going on in front of them. So <clears throat> to cross out things that are on both sides, I've got six nitrates on the left and six nitrates on the right. I've got six hydrogens on the left, six hydrogens on the right, and so my net ionic equation is simply three calcium two plus ions with two phosphate ions making sweet love to become calcium phosphate, that's Ca3PO42, solid. The thing about the net ionic equation is that it is basically the precipitation reaction that happens here. You need the calcium, you need the phosphate, and you need them to come together to form and precipitate the solid calcium phosphate. And again, we know that's solid because of solubility rules. Recap, 
give yourself a balanced chemical equation, break up all the aqueous compounds into their constituent ions, and that will give you the total ionic equation. For the net ionic equation, just cross out things that appear on both sides, and you'll end up with only aqueous things on one side and solids on the other. It's pretty sweet. Rock my world. Best of luck.